Hi, my name is Rajesh Rao. I am the founder CEO of uh, Dhruva Interactive, which is uh, India's oldest games company, uh, founded in 1997 uh, and in business now for 21 years. I am also the convener of the India Game Developer Conference. So Rajesh, I mean, obviously you've, you've been around for a very long time um, and you've also, you know, done a lot of work to create a community, to create the only gaming, the Indian gaming community. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the genesis of this conference, the India Game Developer Conference, now in its 10th year. About 11 years back, it was, I think, when uh, NASCOM was already then supporting the animation industry, which at that point in time was a, a fairly hyped industry. Uh, you know, in India, we like to hype our industries and then figure out later whether they are really worth hyping or not. <laughs> so, uh, so NASCOM was, you know, uh, they were supporting and then they said uh, gaming is kind of related to, uh, you know, animation. And so they invited me to kind of start a, a gaming forum. And I think at that point in time, and I was like, we'd been in this industry for a while. And we had, one of the things that I had realized is that some of us in the, the early players in India, like India Games was in Mumbai. There was uh, Paradox Studios that later became Jump Games, that later became Reliance Games, which was in Pune. Um, and I, and I, there were a few more players. I think that the one thing that we didn't do in the early years was to talk to each other because we were yes, just young and too proud to <laughs> acknowledge the, each other's existence and kind of feeling rivals b without even meeting each other. And I think it was so silly and so stupid because you know we didn't really share knowledge and experience, which would have, I think, fast forwarded all our companies by a few years if we had done so. A few million dollars. And would have saved a lot of money because we were all making the same mistakes and not learning from each other, which would have been fantastic. Right. I mean, we would have saved so much capital. Uh, and I think, uh, hence, or being a little older and wiser, I, when, when NASCOM said, why don't we do this? And I said, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And I think one of the key things that I said what we need to do is, we need to get all the developers start to talk to each other, you know, start meeting each other and to share what they're doing, share their failures more than their successes. And I think because that to me was so, I felt really strongly about it because I said, you know, let new mistakes be made in the process of learning and in the process of doing new initiatives. But for people to repeat the mistakes that I have already made and, you know, India Games has already made and that was just plain silly, right? right. Um, so that was how it started. And we put together like the first conference as a satellite event to the animation conference. Uh, right here at HICC in uh, Hyderabad, t uh, you know, 10 years back, it was like a half a day event and some 150 people turned up, which was a good start, we thought. We were pretty pleased with the outcome. <laughs> and then the next year we called it the NASCOM Game Developer Conference and it became a, uh, like, I think it became a, it was still a one day event, 300 people turned up and it just kind of kept growing. And I think, uh, I think our timing was right. Because uh, 2010 onwards, this industry really took off. I mean, if you take it that 1997, first games company, Dhruva. 99, you had India Games, and you also very closely followed by Paradox Studios. I mean, even by 2003, 4, we, we were probably still five, seven companies. And then by 2010, we were probably 20 companies. And then after that, it's just been a hockey stick, uh, like really hockey stick growth, right? And really, it was uh, driven completely by the whole smartphone and the app store phenomena that kind of really uh, happened. And, you know, the whole Angry Birds and, you know, the Temple Run and it inspired a lot of people to say, you know, we can be a small company and do, you know, publish our own game. And uh, that really took off. And so I think our coming, forming of this, you know, this fledgling industry body and, and starting this conference happened at the right time. Right. And so we just, it just took off. And every year we would do this, we would just basically double in attendance. Right. And, and then, uh, of course, now we don't no longer double in attendance, but it's still a healthy growth. I mean, that, you know, last year was 1,800 people. This year we had 2,500 people. Not that, on, on, not that numbers are a measure of anything. Right. Uh, I think uh, putting together a quality conference is more important than, than touting that we had so many number of people who came. Right. But uh, it just shows how much that industry has grown. Absolutely. You know? So yeah, so I'm, uh, on that point, I want to circle back to the fact that you know, we are here on the 10th year, back to where we actually started. 
Uh, now, obviously, this year things have had, you know, we, we've actually had a very different approach to actually creating this conference. So can you talk a little bit more about, you know, how it is that the industry has actually finally come together to create this event? Sure. So, so I, 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 I correct you to say that the, this has always been an industry-driven event. Uh, we had NASCOM kind of uh, providing us that umbrella organizational support, the secretariat, uh, but it was always driven by the industry. It was always industry-driven. The, con the content for this conference was always put together by the industry. Um, but NASCOM did provide us a lot of support, you know, uh, and they are very good at events and, you know, come conference, there would be people from five different cities that would magically appear, <laughs> you know, from all the NASCOM offices and they would be there helping us. Right. So it was, it was great. But then, you know, it was time to move on. You know, we were, uh, I think that the early support that was necessary, they provided, we're very, very grateful for that. But it was time to move on and stand on our own feet and uh, it was also hence time to rebrand. So there came the challenges of now owning this entirely and now there is no more, uh, you know, umbrella organization that is there. So we had to step up our game and so uh, we did. <laughs> we had no choice. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's been such fun working with, we've had, 30 people thereabouts from 25 different companies all across India putting in their time pro bono besides having their main day job. I mean, forget about people like me. I, I can still say that I can make time. I run a company which is very established. We have, a, you know, we have enough management bandwidth and so I can take some time out if necessary. But you're talking about people who are running startups. They're like in the thick of things. They're working 16 hours a day. And they are yet making time to, you know, provide, you know, their time for the conference and to make this happen. And it was just fantastic. I mean, and everybody knew that this year it's all on us. And, you know, we are going to be responsible for whatever happens. And I think everybody just really came together in a, you know. And, but, but the fact that we had been doing this for a while, I mean, there were people like you who knew their number. They knew what they had to do. Right. Uh, but then there were a whole bunch of new things that we had to do, which we had never done before. Social media and, uh, <laughs> you know, getting a website up and running and, and, and doing promos and ticket sales. All of this, some of this were done by NASCOM, you know, right. for us. And we had to do it now on our own. And uh, we managed to find some really smart people who came along <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, took over these functions. And that was great. And I think uh, we'll build on this now. I think we are super, we are super happy with the way things have turned out. And it really gives us that confidence that we can do this, you know, on our own. And, uh, and then now really, you know, ambitious for what we can do next year. Again, the targets for next year is not, oh, let's make it a 4,000 people event. No, no, it's not that. What can we do better? So like this year, we have very big emphasis on getting feedback from people. Like I'm walking the floor and asking people, hey, tell us what you think we can do better. Because that's really what, you know, people are flying in from everywhere. And... You know, this is an industry where most people, it's a fledgling industry by, for most part, where some successful people, but a lot of them are startups and so they are, uh, this is not like a C-level event where everybody can afford to stay in a five-star. This is people who are, you know, for whom this, you know, the cost of coming here and staying here matters. Right. And so it, we owe it to them to give them a good event, you know. Right. And I think uh, so far I've met mostly happy people and, you know, minor complaints, but otherwise mostly happy people. Right. And I think that's, that's really what we have to do. Right. So now as we are obviously charting the growth of the industry as a whole, uh, what is it, you know, that, that the industry can do together, you know, whether it is through the formation of, um, you know, an advisory board or, you know, in some capacity an association to actually start, you know, uh, creating, creating a foundation for the industry to, you know, grow exponentially over the next few years? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, we did have a kind of a industry platform, uh, we used to call it the NASCOM Gaming Forum, and that was kind of functioning as the de facto industry body for a while. And, uh, you know, NASCOM is a very good lobby body, among other things. Uh, and they were very good at representing the interests of the IT industry. And so they did help us whenever required to kind of go and meet with the government or to meet the ministers of who matter, where, where we thought that it's important for us to go and kind of represent the, you know, the gaming industry. But... Uh, now we, you know, when we decided that it was time to move on, you know, what I, what I did is I called for a roundtable 
of all the people from the industry in uh, you know, so we did that in a, in a hotel by the airport in Bangalore because it's easier no, nobody you know I said we well, let's just meet at one place and so we had nearly 20 companies that participated in that it was really great I just picked up the phone and spoke to everybody and I said you know let's meet in three days and it was just such short notice but it was great everybody turned up some people joined on Skype and I had just two questions I said we are just gonna have two questions going around the table do we need an industry body and if so what should it do so then then that was three hours of lively conversations about what we could, what we should do. We need it, and I think you know unanimously the answer was yes. We need some. We need an industry body uh, to represent us and for discussing discussing you know common problems and areas that we can work together. And then you know it, it kind of emerged on what all we should focus on. And I mean everybody is is really uh, you know suffering for talent. You know even though we are a large country, we just don't have enough smart people who are aware about our industry or aware that we offer offer a career that could be really fun and engaging and, and, and uh, fulfilling. Right. Uh, so we realized that there's a lot of PR that we need to do, a lot of uh, promoting of the, of the industry that we need to do. We needed to do a lot more in terms of working with the educational institutes so that they can be a good feeder to us, uh, you know, kind of share best practices amongst each other. Uh, things like, you know, uh, mentoring programs that we could have for startups, helping startups with anything from even you know, for example, giving them legal advice and you know helping them with transaction transaction advisory, um, protection of intellectual property, protection of intellectual property, taxation matters. You know, now that companies are making money, <laughs> the tax man is coming too, right? And so they are also not sure how to treat the gaming industry, and that so they will apply whatever they think is maybe relevant. And then you have to make sure you represent correctly and make sure because whoever cracks it with you know, let's say there is a uh, you know there is a tax uh, dispute. Whoever cracks it in a particular way, that becomes precedent. So you know it's very important to crack them right, right. you know, and to make sure that the tax guys understand us well enough so that the right you know rate structures and whatever it is that you know are applied, right? right? And even even with policy, you know, tomorrow we must make sure that we proactively engage with the, you know government so that they understand this industry, understand this form of entertainment, uh, and and make sure that you know the right uh, you know the right frameworks are established uh, at, at the right point in time. And then of course, to continue to do the conference, continue to do you know um, cha city chapter meetups and all of those things that are really important to grow this industry. I mean, help investors understand the gaming community. I mean, we've been doing an investor connect for the last three years. Right. I mean, this year, all the major investors are here. All the major VCs from India are, are here. And that's great. And when I talk to them, they say, it's not like we're going to do a deal with any studio, like anybody we met like tomorrow, right? But there are many that they meet who they say, okay, now that's an interesting company and I'm going to track them and I'm right. going to watch them and when we think that they are ready for it then we know who they are already right. and I think that that's that's beautiful right that's great right I mean it's also the the, the genesis of you know the understanding the industry I and mean, obviously uh, venture capital uh, you know requires a, a great deal of thought uh, and understanding of the industry and of the technology as a whole um, and you know that's perhaps what's what's actually going to help us uh, take this forward uh, so I'm going to put you on the spot just as we are about to close our interview do we have dates for next year? So we, we we were hoping to announce dates for next year, but I can say that it is in all likelihood going to be the second half of November. That's all I can say for now. I'm hoping to close dates because the this venue is a very sought after venue. <laughs> sure so we have to we have to literally fight for dates with these guys. So uh, we we are hoping to be able to announce something. And plus, you know. Uh, we are working very closely with the Telangana government, you know, who have been super supportive. And I mean, they've really been some fantastic champions. And they're very, very, very uh, ambitious in what they want to do with the animation, gaming, and visual effects industry. And they've put together this whole India Joy uh, as, a, as a festival for a week. So those dates have to be decided along with them because they will drive that whole festival, uh, you know, along, along with our conference. Because I mean, our conference is really the flagship event for the India Joy festival. Right, so we will have to work along with them, but I'm hopeful that we will. But definitely, we want to announce the dates by Jan or Feb because everybody can plug it into their calendar right. and and make sure that they are you know they know well in advance. All right.